Welcome back to the Raven Magic Podcast. This podcast is a safe, sacred container for us to integrate the shadow together, giving it life, allowing it to be seen and heard. Join me, Raven Allison, as I interview a wide variety of guests dedicated to helping you explore the shadow safely. I invite you to set a sacred ritual space. Allow the medicine of the ravens into your experience. Grab your book of shadows and a pen and trust that you're not alone facing the depths of the collective shadow and how it interweaves into your own unique story. I hope you enjoy this episode and that it brings more consciousness into your life. Welcome back to the Raven Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Raven Allison, and I have one of my nearest and dearest, witchiest friends here, uh, Teresa Edge. Hey, Teresa. Hey, Raven. Yeah. And for those that don't know Teresa from the deep dive we did on her podcast, the Warrior Goddess Witchcraft Podcast, where we kind of, I've mentioned it so many times on the podcast, but if you haven't already done so, you can check it out where we literally did a whole series on how to integrate your shadow through the elements and then we had a lens of witchcraft um you know highlighting mental wellness um as well throughout the whole series so definitely want to check that out and Teresa edge you may know like from the warrior goddess uh witchcraft like being the creator of that and that big witch community so if you're new to the witch and you want to kind of dive in, Teresa is definitely your friend, ally, and yeah, she's just been such a gem on my own quest. So thanks for being here with me today. Oh, thank you for all those kind words, and thank you for having me again. I love talking with you. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we have such a dynamic. So I'm just going to say, for those that are interested in kind of this episode on the Raven Magic podcast today... Um, I know I say it in the intro, but I'm always serious. Please get out your book of shadows. Like, you know, things might resonate if you can set a sacred space. I mean, I know a lot of us are listening to this wherever it's convenient, but sometimes it's nice to just give back to yourself and allow your heart to open and receive what resonates. Let everything else drop. So I know that I promised in my twin flame deep dive that I was going to have Teresa on here so that we could talk about uh, working with dark goddesses and how to integrate your shadow. And we're definitely going to do that. But what has happened is because we are such great friends um, and allies, we actually started like just going through and I, maybe other people will feel this with like all the stuff that's happening in the eclipse season, but we actually ended up having this really interesting experience where, and and other witch women in our lives as well, were kind of mirroring and reflecting this. But um, today, this morning, Teresa was like, I feel like we really need to come on and just authentically talk about kind of what we're experiencing. So I don't want to like throw you on the spot, Teresa, but I feel like maybe I'll just let you kind of introduce. Oh my goodness. I know. I'm like, (laughs) Well, just because like you said, we need to talk about this, you know, and I would say, well, yeah, like, let's just hear it. Let's go. So one thing that we have really been aspecting on lately is this concept of pulling back or uh, reining in where we are standing with whatever's going on in our lives, but most specifically with relationships. And this could be romantic relationships, it could be friend relationships, it could be business relationships. It is in regard to managing our energy, managing our reactions, and listening to our intuition. And this is how we can clarify what is going on around us. It can serve the intent as we move forward in our lives. And it allows us to process whatever is going through, whatever challenge we're facing, whatever uh, circumstance that we may be in, allowing ourselves 
the permission to step back, to lean back, to just kind of take a moment to breathe and to reflect on what is happening in our world and in our mind. It really helps us to concentrate more on where we want to focus our energy, which in turn empowers our own magic. And so Raven with you, I know that you and I have been dealing with so many similar things in our lives and it's been really fabulous to reflect and mirror back. Um, I know that you have helped me tremendously in my situation. And I really just thought this was something that sounded like something that more people could learn from or would relate to. And that was thus my idea of, hey, we should really talk about this more because this could have really big impacts on people's lives. Yes. I love that. And I love the way that you described it. And so to kind of go and take this a little bit further. So for those of you that kind of want to lean into shadow exploration this way, in this way of like being more open and receptive and leaning back and reclaiming that magic and kind of this pause, like Teresa is suggesting, um, you know, we can kind of disclose what we've been dealing with. So we were both like and this i know that those that listen to the twin flame are going to get this like those that are in anxious avoidant dynamics those that have been like kind of you know blinded by the illusion that that inner anima and animus kind of get us locked in that weird fairy tale where of projections onto other people i'm sure that you can all relate to this we were both kind of hanging on and I really want to say like hanging on and like chasing this chasing energy of like our interpersonal connections. And specifically in our case, if I can like disclose, they were both like romantic connections where our needs were not being met. And so one of my other witch friends, Katie, she started like, telling, she was like integrating something similar as well. So we were all kind of like working together in tandem and kind of like really supporting each other in this concept of leaning back. So for this episode, um, as we kind of move through it and explore it, you know, if you're somebody that feels like your needs aren't being met in a connection and you've been kind of like more on the chasing side or the anxious side, or you feel like, um, like, you know, that heartbreak, I call the siren pain, like this heartbreak where you just like, it's causing you more anxiety than it's, than it's doing you good. Then this episode is definitely going to help you because with Teresa's like witch lens and everything, we're going to kind of talk about how we've been dealing with this uniquely um and authentically and i i hope that it does help people out there and if you're kind of more on the avoidant side or you're more in the masculine because this is really more about being in the feminine we're really just kind of reprogramming ourselves to stop pull our energy back into ourselves and like one of the mantras i've literally been saying is like i am open i receive like i just (laughs) like instead of like demanding my needs or things like that it's just been like no I have to stop I have to open I have to receive so if you're like more in that side and you're really resonating then stick around and if you are more in this like avoidant or you're more in the masculine side like maybe just listen up and be compassionate and kind of like hear another side to the story because like I don't want to I always try to be more gender neutral but this is I feel more geared to the feminine that needs help feeling safe and needs clarity to really drop into that open receptivity of like their own energy and power. Does that make sense, Tressa? Like, am I articulating this properly? Absolutely. And I just, I do want to welcome everyone because, you know, part of doing the work is listening So, you know, we're building bridges here. That's, that's how we improve our communication. That's how we improve our relationships is, you know, if this isn't what you personally are going through, you can still learn something. You can watch how we are working and doing our shadow work and and integrating. And, you know, that can inform your circumstances and what you're going through, because very often um, when 
somebody is is feeling alone and isolated because of their circumstances, they feel like nobody else can understand. But if you see how other people are working on their own situations, it helps create more compassion and empathy. So I definitely invite everyone to witness and to, you know, hold sacred space here because this is what it's all about. It's learning about each other. It's learning about ourselves and it's building a bridge of communication and understanding. Yeah. So let's dive into this then. So like we were, we were just kind of noticing that in, we were kind of drowning, I would say drowning, like drowning in this connection. Like, I don't know, sometimes mine was a little bit of a different scenario, but there was a lot of mirroring and I guess I can really only speak for myself, but if you're in a dynamic like this and you kind of want out, one of the things that we've realized, and I always say this as a shadow worker, regardless of who you are, a lot of people, when we realize that there's like this trying to escape that which draws the soul forward, which is that magnetizing thing I talk about, how the shadow manifests, it's pulling us forward because that is a part of us that's asking to be integrated. So a lot of times if you catch your like how you can catch this in yourself is if you're trying to escape a scenario and then you're going right back to it because that's like no different than an addiction. So we kind of like part of us is like not agreeing with it. And then the other part of us is like, whoa, here it is. I Here's my relief. And so if you're in that kind of connection, one of the things like Tressa mentioned in the beginning is you can just get good at kind of pausing. And then what we've been doing is we actually started like cultivating more of a sisterhood and an alliance for when it was hard for us to lean back. And then we would just start kind of practicing this like, no, I have to lean back to be more open and more receptive, especially if you're in a connection where your needs are not getting met, where they're using you for other things and not giving you the commitment that you want or whatever. And like, really, truthfully, you're never going to get the truth unless you switch the energy. Now, this isn't to say that it's a game. It's and it can kind of be a little bit like a game, like we've seen Teresa with us. But like, it's more that you're kind of you're empowering yourself to experience that shadow part manifest in how your soul has aligned it to do so. Because in both of our situations, these other individuals were totally divine. It was really like the perfect person for these integrations. And we really couldn't have like self-actualized this without that. So that's where we're, like, I think you can get really good is if you're going to tarot readings and you're trying to look up this reconciliation or you're, or you're wasting a lot of your energy and real estate in your mind being anxious about it or demanding or like, when am I going to hear from them? And then when you do, you're demanding that they act a certain way, then those are kind of your little alerts like, oh, this probably contains a shadow part of me. I need to lean back. So then when we lean back into our own energy, that's where the magic I think happens. So Teresa, I don't know if you want to like take the thread from there of what we can do when we're like in that leaning back portal and when we're like working with each other or how we did or whatever you want to kind of say, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, when we lean back and we come back into our own cognizant awareness, I think that is the perfect opportunity really to um, reflect and reorganize our own thoughts, our own energies, because what happens is when we step forward and step into the relationship, there is an integration of our energy with the other person's energy. And that can get muddled if one is toxic or both are toxic. And then that's where um, confusion, miscommunication, you know, all those types of negative energies can occur. So stepping back, how I visualize it is you're stepping back into your own energetic higher self because you have to release what is in front of you. You have to take that distance as an opportunity to face what is going on. There are fears that come up. There are judgments that come up. Maybe for some people there's a, um, the voice of the victim in the back of their head because they have unresolved trauma 
um, that they haven't healed yet. Um, and all of this can just become this like sticky quicksand that we get stuck in and we have to disengage and we have to remove ourselves from that. And thus the concept of leaning back or of stepping back, you are literally stepping out of that, that mire of energy that has been contaminated through not properly adjusting and facing your true north while dealing with the other person. So for my circumstance, I can tell you that um, the illusion, the fairy tale was what I always got trapped in. And that's why Raven, you uh, and I have talked about this before where I felt I, it was what I called the princess wound because you know, you're know you raised or most women in the Western world are raised with this fairy tale attitude of Prince Charming will come. All you have to do is sit there and look pretty, right? And your Prince Charming yes. will come. Um, and I, I allowed myself to get, you know, in, enmeshed in this illusion. And I kept, you know, wondering why am I in this situation? Why am I dealing with this? Why is this happening? And I would have to step back and go, oh, right. Because that's not what's really going on here. You know, I have to face my fear of, you know, being alone, or I have to face my fear of, um, you know, not being good enough or whatever the case may be at any given situation. And I have to remind myself, I'm, I'm not, you know, just the princess sitting there waiting for Prince Charming. I'm a damn warrior princess and I'm going to, you know, cut through this, you know, webbing on my own. I'll save my own self. Um, I don't need anybody to save me for me. Um, and so this has been a completely um, almost a, a explosive process because I keep challenging myself to reach new levels. And for the first time in a very long time, it feels like I'm actually headed in the right direction. And I'll tell you, I'm, I'm almost 50 years old. And for the first time in my life, it finally feels like I'm truly learning who I am and what I want in a relationship. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I love your sharing and thanks for being so authentic. Like, I'm just going to pull some of those things out for, for others at home. So like, oh my gosh, we want to talk getting stuck in a fairy tale. I, I like charmed my own self into a fairy tale hell of illusions. But as I talked about in some other episodes, that's kind of what our inner unseen partner does to us. And so, you know, we, the princess wound, like stuff like that, or if you want to kind of like even, you know, maybe a lot of you are relating to that. I think like the biggest thing is, is if you're in a situation like this, you have to lean back. You have to pull your energy back and observe and really support yourself and and to kind of get clear because what that allows is either and I actually liked this method that Katie shared with me and like how Teresa and I've even been integrating these connections because what this does is it actually gives the other person permission and space and like to show up because you're kind of turning the energetic tables so when you kind of integrate it like this and then you you know if you engage with the person that's fine like let it be an experience gather more data get more conscious move through it um and that's kind of how to go back to what Teresha was sharing about kind of being in these like in her own fairy tale that's kind of how the illusions in both of our scenarios got lifted is then we actually when we're pulling back it's like Oh, now that I'm not in the mother, which is like the other side of the princess coin, <laughs> it's like trying to demand that the hero step up and giving them all these tasks and duties and all, you know, telling them all the things they're not meeting. When that is when you're pulling your feminine back and you're being more open and receptive, then unfortunately, sometimes what you receive is not good. <laughs> It's like nothing. It could be nothing. It, it's revealing the truth, right? But on the other side, for those that like, you know, I can really relate to it being easier when we can have that thread of hope or when we really do love somebody. 
and we wish that they felt the same way. So I kind of really liked that about this method. And I know my friend Katie expressed the same. Like she really was like, you don't have to let this person go, but you can like start slowly opening and allowing them to lead it. Now that might teach you that if you don't do anything, that person drops out of your life, but it also might show you why they're coming towards you and give you more clarity. And it might actually allow you to rebuild the connection anew in a healthier dynamic. So the, and, and also if this is an anxious avoidant pull, then what this actually does, if you can start giving to that anxious child within, instead of latching for this un available rejection partner, which is no different than like an addiction, it actually gives that other person permission and space to heal and do the work. Now, that's not guaranteed that they will do that, but it really does allow them that opportunity. So Teresa, what I would love based on what I've just shared in this like thing is that one of the things that Teresa and I have done when we're when we're in this phase. So if we're in the pull, the pulling back phase and then we're reclaiming our energy and being in this different space where our inner witch has really been activated is we've been doing tons of ritual to cord cut, clear the energy and then set a new energetic boundary based on our inner integration. So Teresa, I would love for you to like take that thread and run with it in regards to like cord cutting and how to like regrid these new energies or, you know, how we can maybe use ritual to integrate these shadow aspects. Cause like, that's always on the undercurrent, right? It's like what you just said, you uncovered a wounded princess that needs love as an example, right? Yeah, exactly. And cord cutting is such a tremendously versatile tool that we can use because you can call in allies, you can call in archangels, you can do it completely on your own. I use chakral energy. Um, there's really no wrong way to do it. It's, it's so um, great to have something that you can make it just uniquely your own. Um, so I know for like, for, for me, there are different ways that I can um, do cord cutting, depending on the situation. I've used the Archangel Michael. He's fabulous. Um, there are times when I just need to do something quick just to get it done. Um, and I just use uh, a quick root chakra to ground into the earth. I cut the cord ground into the earth and ask Gaia to alchemize the energies for me so that I can just move on with my day. Um, there's really, like I said, there's no wrong way to do it. I happen to notice though, that um, during one particular time when I knew I had to process a lot of energy, that uh, when I would um, call up the powers of the earth, there was always, um, there was something that was kind of not getting the job done. And I, I happened to just have the thought that I should use the energy of volcano of this eruptive and uh, emotive firepower. And it was an amazing experience <laughs> and a little <laughs> shocking. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, how many people use uh, volcanoes <laughs> in their magic work, but it's, it's, it was very interesting and very powerful, I, I must say. Yeah, I love that. And like, yeah, well, from a psycho shamanic lens, yeah, you can use anything. And Teresa is always the type that's going to empower you to do it yourself. But if you're new to cord cutting, um, I don't know if this resonates, but I like I find that you kind of if you can intuitively tap into your own ritual, then that's great. But you can just like kind of like even get into a sacred space and kind of close your eyes and meditate and visualize the other person and then just intuitively tap into anywhere where their energy feels like it's connecting to yours. And one of the most, I don't know if you would agree with this, Teresa, so I'm totally open if you differ, but I feel like one of the most beautiful things about cutting ties with people is that it does give the energy an opportunity to transform and we don't have to, even when we're mad at people, we don't have to do it angrily. It's like more about you pulling in. I, that's what I do. I kind of like cut each cord and I give the person back their energy and I reclaim all my own energy. And then I put a new energetic bubble 
with my new boundary. So let's say I want commitment and this person is only offering me a friends with benefits as an example. Then I like cut everything that we've experienced out of my energy. I thank them. And then I push them outside of this boundary and I invite them in at the heart in that new energy, right? Like you have to, and this, what this does too, like, you know, regardless of how you're doing it, but if you're doing that reclaim of your own energy and drawing in your own energy, then what that also does is it helps empower you forward and it helps invite that energy in regardless of who it comes from. So that's kind of another component of this in this open receptiveness and the leaning back to receive is that then we can invite this new energy in and you might be surprised, like maybe it comes in a different form, right? Oh, absolutely. Because I, I totally did not expect to be working with Volcano that day. It, <laughs> it, was, it was out of the blue, but it was wonderful. And uh, I haven't had another experience like that again, but yes, for sure. I mean, the the important thing is is that you clarify and understand what your intent is when you do it, Mm. because it's not going to be the same thing for every person in every situation. So, you know, that's why, you know, my advice, like you said, uh, is always to listen to yourself. What do you need? Ask yourself, what is it I'm trying to get out of this? What is my purpose here? Um, What do I want to happen? And then honestly, the most important aspect of, this magical working but also of any magical working do your spell say your intent do the work but the key here is always let go of any expectations let the universe do its magic let it do what it needs to do for you because if you're sitting there trying to control the results of your own magical working you're not going to get what you want you have to learn to let go of all your expectations and let it be what it's meant to be. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. Yeah. Because then like, cause that also, <laughs> you know, what's really coming through for me. Cause I, I'm just, I, I have the inner trickster magician smirk on so big. Cause instantly I'm like, yeah, like there's nothing wrong with casting your own self-serving spells, but like Teresa is saying, like, if you're going to kind of have that controlling aspect of like outcome and stuff, then a lot of times that does end up backfiring, especially if we aren't giving ourselves permission to truly tap into the heart because it's probably like, you know, we, we deserve like really nice connections and heart connections and people that support our journeys and everything else. So if somebody is not able to do that, you know, it's not really worth trying to cast a spell for them to come in because you're really just kind of going the opposite way. And you're not being in that open receptive. And you know what was another thing that really helped me too was calling in some of the allies, like you said. So as like a shadow worker and a witch, a lot of things that Teresa and I, and like hopefully people listening to this have good friends. Because a lot of times when you're working with friends, then like when, you know, Teresa was receiving me, she'd be like, oh my gosh. Because I was stuck I was stuck in the Hades Persephone kink for like so long. Like I just wanted a dark, well, I kind of took it literally where I was like, oh, like this must be like my maiden wanting to be mastered by a man or whatever. But then Teresa as an outside observer just called it right out um, and was like, oh, Raven, like you got to figure out why your dark goddess is like looking for a dark God to meet her. And that like exploded my mind because for those that have followed my story or if like, if you knew me, like that is the most obvious statement ever. (laughs) I was projecting that dark God masculine on every man in my life. Like I wanted them to be that. It was just funny because sometimes you need an outsider. I'm using it as an example because sometimes you need an outsider to tell you the obvious. And so she suggested I work with Medusa. And then that was so healing. And I know we're going to do another episode on it. So it's not like I need us to dive in, but I'm just saying that like really trust yourself, like Teresa's saying, and you, you know, do the shadow component of this. So if on the surface you're pulling back, 
you're kind of letting this person come in or come out. You're opening your energy to new connections because that sends a powerful kind of like message to the universe too, right? You're opening up, whether it's to your work, like it doesn't necessarily have to be to other romantic connections, but it can be, and it can be to work or you or whatever. And then the undercurrent is like, that's the alchemy. So for me, I had like Medusa helped me so much move beyond Hades and Persephone, not that there's anything wrong with that. But she was really helping me like integrate that core feminine and really like transformed my own inner masculine instead of this like soft dom. Then he just became this like rock pillar of stability. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know, like, I, yeah, I don't know if you have anything to add, Teresa, but it's just like, I felt called to kind of share that because we, I know we'll do it. We will, I promise we will do a deep dive into like how you can uniquely tap into them specifically, but you know, you've helped me with so much. Oh, well, thank you. You, you know, honestly, the one thing I would add and, and we'll go into this, you know, like you said, in a different episode, but just for everybody today the best thing about working with dark goddesses is how your perspective changes, mm. not just of yourself, but of them, because there is so much, I mean, can I say bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> Surrounding. And it, it comes from the, the patriarchal um, chokehold that uh, has been around the throat of mythology for thousands of years. Um, and so, you know, there might be listeners out there saying, oh, Medusa, why would you work with her? Or, you know, Persephone was a victim. You know, why, why is that empowering? Well, if you actually work with the goddesses and you listen to them and you let them tell you who they are and you hear their story from their own perspective, you realize you really have misunderstood dark goddesses. Um, you know, through no fault of your own, but you, you absorbed the patriarchal viewpoint throughout your entire life. And then when you realize, oh, that's not how Medusa is. That's not how I have to work with her. It just opens up an entire new world of magic and teaching and learning and just learning how to receive and to use your word learning how to receive divine guidance through a channel that would not have been open to you had you kept the dream of the planet within your focus and what i mean by that is if you keep believing all the stories that you have been told throughout the years or that you read in these books that all they do is perpetuate the same thing over and over and over, you're not actually doing the work. You're not paying attention. You're not opening your awareness and you're, you're surely not going to fulfill your own witchy potential. You have to set aside everything you've been told and you have to open up to what you're receiving on a divine level. And a lot of people don't do that. So it, it's really, it, it, it recreates your relationship with the divine spirit, with goddess herself in all her manifestations, not just the dark goddesses. But I think for me, that was a pivotal point where I had to redefine everything I thought I knew and go back straight to the beginning of the basics of witchcraft and go, okay, I'm going to destroy the foundation that was built for me and create my own foundation and not apologize for it. This is my belief. This is my system. You go and do what you want to do. But I stand on, you know, the shoulders and wisdom of my allies and my ancestors and my own intuition. And this is my magic and I'm not going to apologize for it. And I'm not going to explain it, you know, in a way that makes me have to prove myself. I don't have to prove myself. 
Nobody else has to prove themselves. It's called magical sovereignty for a reason because it has to stay true to your heart. It has to stay true to your intuition. And if it doesn't do that, it's not your magic. Yeah, it's powerful stuff. And I completely agree. And I also kind of just wanted to reflect about and like really empower what you're saying is even yes, the patriarchy for sure, but like even some of the news stories that are beautiful or have been rewoven about Lilith or Persephone or other goddesses, I really just want to echo the power of forming an actual relationship with whoever you're working with and trusting their story from them. Like, I know you just said that, but like, it is so potent. Um, and yeah, like it, it's just been so beautiful. And that's why we want to do a whole big episode on it. Cause like I, right now I'm like, Oh yeah, let's go. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I do really want it to be like in a real sacred container. But if you've never worked with them, and you're kind of just like, oh, whatever, I would say right away, um, pay attention to kind of like who might be coming into your radar for what you're dealing with or what drew you into this episode. And I think it was you, like Teresa, that kind of like encouraged me to do this when we first spoke of Hecate and stuff like that. Um, treat them how you would treat like anyone and kind of offer them into your space, right? Like kind of picture, like if you're like, oh, I don't know how and you... You can just open and you can even say that like maybe you're at a beginning and you're like, how do I get out of this like anxious, you know, trap that I'm looping around in longing after somebody that is literally unavailable. You can, you can literally start there. You, you can, if you don't know, you can actually ask, Hey, I'm opening my space who wants to come in and help me with this? And then you have to really do what Teresa said and, and trust your own self and what comes through. And that is like something that's been really helping us with this is like working our magic. And another thing is, is like, I started opening, <laughs> come on to go back to this open and receptive so when we're reprogramming ourselves, you can like start putting your energy into things that you like, that things that empower you, because it can be hard when we get sucked into that anxious and the anxiety. And then we just want that fix, which is like really is what's happening. So you can one thing I started doing and even in new energy and even in friends, because I used to only cord cut when it was something, quote unquote, negative or when a connection ended. But now I've been cord cutting all the time, <laughs> clearing the energy and like really allowing it to just be new, even when it's positive, because cord cutting with people isn't negative. It's just like clearing your energy. So if you're a sloppy, energetic, clear like I am, that's something that I really started changing about myself. And I've noticed that it's really, really helping me. And yeah, just like working with your own magic and then working with these deities or people that are coming in to help you to lean back to be open and receptive to like what you actually want and what you actually deserve in these kind of connections right exactly and um for those who may be hesitant to do cord cutting um if i can reference um the season three we did together if you're more familiar with working with the elements, you can actually work with the element of fire mm. and you can do a ritual where you walk through fire or you rise from like a Phoenix. Um, and that is an instantaneous clearing of energy and it just burns down the old and you emerge into the new. And that's a really great way to um, allow yourself, you know, to just drop whatever is binding you if you need to focus more on what's ahead of you burning down the old like burning that bridge literally well not literally metaphorically right <laughs> um, let's not cause arson here but yeah just just being able to use the elements but especially with fire that is a great way to trigger the alchemy and the transformation and it just opens up a whole new doorway for you, a whole new portal 
that you can step into and find out what it is that's opening to you. Because sometimes I think when we open to receive, we still have these expectations in the back of our mind of how we want it to be. And that is what we have to release as well. If we're going to open, we have to truly open and trust the universe that what we need is going to come into our path. And even if we don't like it, ask, you know, is this safe for me? Can I do it? And trust that you have already within you the ability to face the challenges that spirit puts in your way, knowing you have all the tools and the wisdom inside of you to pull from if necessary. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And it's really beautiful. It's such a fun process because you can actually start like getting really good at this, like pulling back and then, you know, seeing the person or you're just like, I don't know. I've been having a great time. I, <laughs> <laughs> It definitely has had moments of like sucking and like, well, I'm just kind of thinking about the people that might be listening to this that were like us, whereas like now you and I, I think are in a little bit of a different stage. Um, but yeah, like just kind of like really, and I love your reference to the fire episode as well, or using fire or other things and just like being receptive and taking away the projections because that's usually what we're reaching for in these, right, Teresa? Like, it's an illusion or else it would be manifest. And I think that was like in both of our, in actually everybody, like even these other witchy women that I talking about, but also in Teresa and my unique experiences, the common denominator was that we were all as the, as we were helping each other out of this like illusionary fog, we were, we were lifting the projections. And then when we opened to receive who these people actually were, it was like, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> exactly. exactly. So it's actually like kind of a fun process that way, because the more you actually lean back and you start looking at the person for who they are, then if they are in alignment, they're going to come towards you. And then you like Teresa is saying, then you have to give them and the experience, the opportunity to unfold as it should without your like agenda, because that's not us really getting to know the people for who they are. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, what we're looking for here is freedom. Mm. We need freedom from expectations. We need freedom from illusions. We have to be free to be who we are. Yes. And we have to allow the other person to be free, you know, in who they are. And so in my case, you know, that freedom comes in not just leaning back, but in walking away and realizing that the circumstances that, you know, I am in personally, um, that is, that is an elevation for not only myself, but for the other person involved. And that aids us in our evolution of our path. And it empowers us to then take that authenticity and further redefine who we are, what we want, bringing us clarity so that when we encounter our next relationship, we've done the work. It's, it's there. The lesson has been learned. And I think a lot of people skip that step. You know, they, they either don't do the work at all or they give minimal effort toward doing the work and they think, oh, I'm okay now. I just want to move on. And, you know, here comes the next thing. And then they can't figure out why they're in the same loop. Yeah. Um, it's, it's definitely a process and you have to honor that because you have to honor yourself. You have to honor the other person and you have to honor the lesson that spirit is trying to teach you because that's what we're here for. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. We're here to expand our own wisdom, our connection to each other and our connection to self. This is the source of our magic, our connection to self, because without that, we're just stumbling around in the dark. We don't know what we're doing. You know, we can fake it for a little while, but if you don't have that connection to your own authentic self and your personal truth, 
then your relationship isn't going to work with anyone because you're not working on the relationship with yourself. Does that make sense? It does. But I really want to highlight and I agree with everything that you said, but I really what it was reminding me of is also like the other side of that coin too, right where I think a lot of that and I'm not saying that you're doing this at all, Teresa, I know that you'll agree with me when I kind of highlight this, I think like in a lot of cases, and I know from our private conversations too, sometimes like when we put especially if it's like toxic or a situation that we are kind of aware we need to walk away from. Sometimes like we've been gaslit or programmed, or we actually aren't really even seeing ourselves clear or our role in the dynamic clear. And so then, especially if we are aware and we are doing the work and we're kind of one of those and we, we are more conscious, then without realizing it, we can, you know, the undercurrent of that is that then we put the weight on ourselves. Oh, I should have known better. I have to go deeper before I'm with somebody. I, you know, I have to integrate this trauma before I'm worthy of a partner when that actually isn't true either, especially if you're going to do these shadow integration, witchy practices like Teresa and I are, are sharing. So if you are cord cutting and you're doing that, because one, I guess like what's coming to mind is in my scenario, the person was a safe person. I felt safe with them. We have a good friendship and everything else. But what was happening was I kept putting myself inside an anxiety loop. And even though they were there for me, which is why it kind of was harder for me to process, it actually couldn't ever heal because they weren't committing to the connection. So even though it was exclusive, I trusted them. I felt safe. It was integrating trauma. The anxiety that triggered couldn't heal because we were working on it, quote unquote, but band-aiding it and not moving towards a future. And it didn't have a container that helped me feel safe. So the, and then in Teresa's situation, without going into details, she's like having it where it's triggering her anxiety and everything like that. And it, and it's not having those other components. It's actually having somebody that whether conscious or not is kind of just like kind of stringing along mine was more like on the unconscious side and hers was me well fuck you know what they were probably both fucking unconscious but anyway (laughs) (laughs) I guess like I'm just trying to kind of give that side of it where when we realize these things like I, I guess I'm trying to kind of highlight how tricky it can be without our friends to kind of give that other lens. And if you're somebody that's like alone or when we are good at integrating and we kind of take that on. So one thing you can do as well is kind of know that you are worthy. So that's why I used my kind of thing. Like, cause you know, some people sometimes like the partner will even say like, oh, you you have to heal because they don't want to deal with it. You have to heal this trauma before you're worthy of love, or you're going to have this problem over and over and over again. When the truth is, is that will I have anxiety in my next connection? Not necessarily, right? If I actually have somebody, because I'm not projecting it. I'm actually conscious of it. I'm aware. So somebody can actually show up and, and integrate that willingly with me, even with an avoidant, if they're aware of theirs. And so I like, I knew I agreed with everything you were saying, but I really wanted to point out how we, cause like, I keep seeing this in all of my, I would say more conscious friends is like, without realizing it, we take on, oh no, I have to do all this work before I have a partner when that's bullshit. (laughs) Exactly. And (laughs) yes. And thank you for reflecting that because yeah, that is, um, That is a very good point. And, and let me just assure everyone that, that I totally did not mean you have to have all your shit together or don't bother getting into another relationship. That is not what I meant at all. We are human beings. We are having a human experience. Mm -hmm. And as such, you will always be perfectly imperfect. What I was talking about was you, what you're doing is you're allowing a previous lesson to inform you so that when you go on to your next lesson and make your next mistake, hello, um, you can do so from an informed platform. You can do so from um, 
a place within your heart that tells you, okay, I know from a year ago or five years ago or whatever, or from a previous relationship that when I did this or I did that, it didn't work. So moving forward, I am more aware. I have a higher awareness. I have a deeper connection to myself and to spirit and to my inner guidance that I can make a better informed decision. And if I want to do this again, if I want to try this again, I know it can work out differently. It could backfire and be the same, or this person could actually be accepting of what the last person rejected. Mm -hmm. You will never be perfect. You will never not make a mistake. You will never not have work to do. As long as you are living incarnate in this lifetime or any other lifetime, you will have work to do. Your job is to make sure you're moving forward and not backward. That's, that's the clarity that we need. Stop moving backward, start moving forward. What leaning back allows and what this is so great at, and I, I'm so grateful that you, Raven, have introduced this into my life and shared what Katie shared with you, was it allows you the space to breathe because this work is so intense. It can get so heavy, so overwhelming. We literally forget to breathe. And what leaning back gives us is that permission to breathe. And that is what allows us to say, okay, now I see what the illusion is. Now I see, you know, that my expectations were uncalled for, or they were you know, never going to be met or whatever the case may be for each person's different individual situation. But yes. And thank you for, for, like I said, reflecting this back and, and for highlighting this, but it's never a question of becoming more perfect. What we're becoming is more involved and more connected. And that's the key. Mm. Yeah. I love that. And thank you for like, I, I love your clarification and your deeper dive there. And it was really funny when you're like, we need to move forward, not back, but lean back. <laughs> but I know <laughs> that it's different. I, and it's, it is way different. And it's been so powerful for somebody um, like, like, I don't know. I didn't really allow myself. I, I play both sides of the coin. And what I mean by that is if I have somebody that's really pursuing me heavily, I go right into the avoidant polarity. And so I've, I've been being like, it's actually been kind of challenging for me when I'm leaning back where now I have like other energy. Cause that's another thing too, right away. I had all this new energy coming at me that was also showing me that I, I did deserve these things I was asking for. And then because I'm, I, I, I had to catch that in myself too. And then be like, no, I open and receive. And even when I said no, a great practice in this like leaning back to breathe, get clarity or whatever. Then when we go out and we open to what's coming in without these kind of, I guess, expectations like Teresa was saying, then you can receive things and decline them politely. So I've been doing that a lot. I've been like, oh, yes, I received this. Or I'm just like thanking the universe for all this like masculine attention I'm getting or you know, kindness or thanking them for my friends and then being, and just kind of like keeping that flow going. And it's been really helpful because I, I feel like it really pulls in that when we're in those connections, we're trying to get our needs met. And if somebody can't meet our needs as frustrating as it is, like we can't make them, you know, like, I don't know. It's just, it's really exhausting. Like, I'm so glad that I'm not in that anymore. <laughs> it was really taking up a lot of my energy. And it was really, like, I did mention in that other twin flame thing, like, where the other person in my situation was, was trying to become that person. So it was like a double-edged sword. They were trying to be the person I needed. And then I wasn't getting my needs met. So no one was winning. So... Yeah. But I won't lie. There is still a part of me that's like, 
you know, like that's like open to that, which I think is okay. So if that's you and you can kind of relate, like, you know, I am really open. So what I'm doing on my end is I'm actually softening. I'm opening. I've completely removed myself. I, and I allow them to lead the connection. Um, and then I have just been trying to get to know them without my illusions on top of them. Whereas I am kind of doing the opposite. I'm being patient with myself and I'm just moving forward because I am cutting the ties. I am cutting the strings of my expectations of that person and of myself to that person. Um, and I'm just moving forward and I'm redefining what it is I want and, you know, realizing that it's okay. It's perfectly okay to have had that experience. Yeah, it was uh, painful. It was um, triggering. Um, but there was still love there. There was still gratitude there. And it's okay to hold space in your life for two opposite things. And this is uh, the, one of the biggest lessons I've had to learn because of this experience it's okay to love and simultaneously let go. Yes. It's okay to remain and it's okay to leave simultaneously. If so for people who think that this is either or instead of saying either or start saying, and this and this, and it's okay. You don't, always have to split yourself in half you don't always have to go to war with yourself start saying and instead of or and feel into that energy feel into how that relaxes you and allows you the sacred space to say it's okay i can say yes to this and i can say yes to that and it doesn't have to make sense. And nobody else has to give you permission to do it. And nobody else has to understand because this is your journey, not theirs, mm -hmm. yours. Your life is not a community project. Yeah. Uh, again, thanks for saying that. And I just like, <laughs> this is probably me trying to defend myself. It's probably a shadow. I'm probably like, wait a second. I <laughs> <laughs> No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I just like want to say that I like, I'm not holding on to this individual because I have to move forward like Teresa as well. Like, and there would be different parameters. And that's another thing too. I've actually readjusted my boundaries for what I would even need. Should this person decide that they would like to commit to the connection and give our relationship an honest try. But I just kind of want to share that. Like, I'm actually kind of like, even like, oh my God, I hope that this other person doesn't fucking listen to this. <laughs> um, but I'm even, I'm because I'm blushing. But like, I guess like, the reason I want to share is to kind of go off of that. Don't split yourself. Like, this is what that individual really showed me and what this experience is showing me. I am moving forward. I was attached and fucking reaching out. I've been swearing so much on this episode, so I apologize. But I was reaching outside of myself for, like, so long with other connections that, it, yeah, that I was holding out for. And this isn't like that. It, it feels different. And I guess I just want to share that because it really is coming from what Teresa and I have shared this whole episode is that I'm actually open to connections that can meet me. But I guess like where I'm being different is that my heart really wants to still allow that connection to be like, I want to still be open to that connection. And I think it took me a long time to like be okay with that. And who knows, maybe the more I allow the unfolding, the more I'll be like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I'll be more on the side that Teresa's on where I'm like, get the fuck out of my life. Um, who knows? But 
I just wanted to say, it's like what you're saying. I just wanted to echo that. You can do whatever you want, but it, I am open and moving forward and letting that person go. And uh, yeah, I just, I just kind of wanted to, I don't know if I'm articulating it because I don't even have words. It feels like an energy. It's more like I really feel like I'm open, I'm letting them go, and I'm simultaneously open to receiving them in new energy, but not holding on and removing my expectations. Right, exactly. Does, does that make sense? Like, I don't know. I just feel like it's been such a whirlwind. Well, I think a good visual might be in my situation. You know, what, what I'm visualizing, what's coming through for me is there's the person and I am literally turning and going, you know, and walking away in a di different direction, the direction of my life and my future as I want it to be. Not that I'm casting them out or whatever, because the friendship will remain. But I think the visual that I got for you when you were expressing that was that you are still facing the person and your hand is out and open, you know, like you're, you're still open to receive. Whereas I put my hand down and walked away mm. and it, it's, you know, not in a negative way, not in a, a destructive way, you know, like I said, because the friendship remains, but I I've mentioned this to you before in a private conversation, I am to the point now where I want my future more than I want my past. Yes. And that has helped me pivot and realign and refocus and recommit, you know, to myself and reclaim my power because I was giving my power away. <laughs> I was like, here, take my power, take everything. I, I, you know, it's all yours. That's where I was. That was part of my princess wound. And it came to a point where I'm like, wait a minute, what the fuck? What am I doing? This is ridiculous. Why am I doing this? No, give me my power back. You don't get it anymore. You know, you, you abuse the privilege of having power over me for all the you know sense that that makes. But you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just a matter of you have to clarify your intent to yourself because that is the first thing that matters. Everything else comes second. So in my case, I put my hand down, like I said, and I walked away. In your case, you're still standing there and your hand is still open to receive. And I think that is so brave and it just speaks volumes as to the kind of person that you are, Raven, because honestly, I don't know if I were in your situation um, that that is something that I could do. I don't know that I would have it within me to do that. And so to me, that just speaks of how beautiful and big your heart is. And that just tells me that you are exactly where you need to be doing what you need to do. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's been really, really cool. And yeah, it's like, I definitely have boundaries, though. Like, fuck, I Yeah, this is why I can't hold on. <laughs> I might be standing there with my hand open for a long time if I don't move forward. So I, uh, I'm definitely still moving forward and I am open to other connections and things like that. And that actually is helpful. Like if you're in a position where you can do that, don't throw all your eggs in one basket. Um, because that'll help open you up and, and help you see. I kind of just think about people that are stuck in like that twin flame loop or right where they literally believe that the one like that's it like so if that's you you know maybe hopefully this episode kind of helped you kind of maybe look at it a little bit differently and sometimes when we really like somebody we can get so fixated on how they're not loving us um that we might miss out on what's really out there so definitely open your energy to receive and it's been so fun to just be like wait I've got to pause and lean back and like breathe. And then, okay, now I'm receiving, I'm receiving. And then if you don't like what you receive, you just send it back, <laughs> do your witch rituals, get clearer and re-invite some new energy.
And yeah, like anyway, thanks so much for this beautiful episode, Teresa. I can't wait to have you back and we'll totally do shadow integration with the dark goddesses and how you can do that by yourself. But like Teresa said, just kind of go and trust yourself and forge your own way. And in closing for this episode, you know, just take it a cup at a time, like I always say, but did you have anything you wanted to add, Teresa? You know, just trust yourself. Because at the end of the day, you're the person you have to live with. Trust yourself, love yourself, honor yourself first above anything else. And, you know, that's always going to start you off on the right foot. Yes. And, and I think like when, <laughs> just to close this out, I think when, and well, not even think, I feel that for me, and I have seen it in you as well and how far we've come is that's what happens is like we can get hooked and then we're not anchored and rooted in ourself anymore. Right. Exactly. We're gone. And so this returning back home, it, it, that allows us a stable pillar to feel less anxious, to start like recultivating our own self and our new journey. So I hope that this podcast served you. If you want to connect with Teresa, I will link her info and her, like if you are new to witchcraft or anything, you can follow the warrior goddess witchcraft um, page. And yeah, she shares lots of valuable content and things like that. And yeah, just go easy on yourself. I always say like, you know, we're integrating big stuff here and hopefully our unique sharing helped you kind of, you know, reflect about maybe what you're going through. So thanks so much for coming, Teresa. Thank you for having me, Raven. Okay, we'll see you all next episode. Cheers. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Raven Magic Podcast. If you would like to support me, Raven Allison, and this podcast, please consider donating to the PayPal link provided in the description of each episode. All proceeds are fed back into this project dedicated to helping make conscious shadow integration more widely accessible. Another way that you can give back to this project and yourself is if you're somebody that needs help that doesn't have anywhere to explore these darker aspects, these unconscious aspects of the self, I have a patron community dedicated to empowering you psychoshamanically with prompts, playbacks, lectures, and classes, as well as community of people just like yourself. It's open pledge and fully accessible starting as low as a dollar per month. I hope to see you there and thank you for exploring your unconscious self.